Dr. Hodges. I just want to um, have a little quick talk as I'm walking um, back to my office. I just had to go around at lunchtime. And you know, one of my patients asked me a question today in clinic and I thought that this might be a good quick topic to talk about. And it was, after I have surgery, um, what's that maintenance gonna be like? Like, what am I gonna have to do? That was literally how she asked me. And I said, you know, and she wasn't necessarily talking about what specific vitamin, I think she just meant in general. One of her concerns was um, skin. And I told her, I said, you know, there's two things. A lot of people have this image in their head that when they have weight loss surgery, number one, they have to be like 400 pounds or have 300 excess pounds. And number two, that once they lose their weight, it's gonna be like the biggest loser. And the reality is, is that the majority of my patients only have maybe 100 excess pounds. I mean, and so if you're losing 50, 60, 70 pounds, for most people, by the time that you lose that, you might have some skin laxity, um, but it's not going to be an excessive amount of skin. The only time that I really start to see when people have a lot of loose skin is if you tend to hold your weight in one particular area. So, you know, some folks might have a little bit of an apple body, apple shape. They're probably gonna have more excess skin in their abdomen. Or if you carry more weight in your hips or only in your arms, or if you're ladies and you have a large chest, so if you seem to keep your weight more in one area, then yes, you may have a little bit more excess skin as opposed to if you kind of carry it more evenly all over. So that was number one that I was able to tell her. Um, her BMI was about 35, 36. I, she held her weight evenly all over, so I don't foresee her having a significant issue with um, a lot of loose hanging skin. Then the second question that she asks is, am I gonna just look sick? Like, I, she's like, you know people? She said, I could have died. She said, some people look like a lollipop. And I was like, oh my goodness. And I told her, I was like, you know, I don't want you to think that when you have weight loss surgery, you're going to have to give up your life. My husband has had a gastric bypass, but there's not any restaurant that we can't go to. Now, have we changed the portion sizes and some of the things that he does eat? Absolutely. But I mean, we love our Mexican food. We, we still go and have fajitas. It's just that now we share a, a single order of fajitas. Um, he certainly doesn't eat cheese enchiladas all the time. Now, will he indulge every now and then? Yes, but he can only tolerate like one small one. Um, and so I told her, I said, if you ever are, if you ever have friends that have had weight loss surgery and maybe they're complaining, oh, I can't eat this and I can't eat that. No, I get sick all the time. I will tell you what's happening is that they're just not doing the things that they need to do. Number one, if you look at someone and they just, their skin just doesn't look right, more than likely that has to do with the vitamins that they're taking or rather what they're not taking. You gotta take your vitamins every day. You're always gonna have to take your vitamins. That's just part of the deal. But you know, there are a lot of different really good vitamins that are out there. You can do Bariatric Advantage. They have Ultra Solo. They have another one that is called the Advanced Multi EA. And those are a multivitamin, iron, B12, and vitamin D all in one supplement. And they're only like 20 some odd bucks a month. You can always go do, if you do Centrum Adult, you do have to do two a day. Um, you do still need to do vitamin D um, and calcium, but you don't have to break the bank. Um, so that's number one. So you do have to make sure that you're doing your vitamins on a regular basis. That way you're maintaining your health and you're getting your um, dietary requirements. And I think the last thing is, is that, are you always gonna need to do your protein? Yes, if you don't want your hair to thin, if you're on thyroid medicine, I have found that if your um, thyroid levels are kind of wonky and going up and down and they're having to adjust the medicines, if you're not keeping up with your protein levels, um, that does seem to impact your need um, to keep on increasing your thyroid medicine. But does that mean that you're gonna have to do a great big protein shake every day for the rest of your life? No but you are gonna to have to find ways to incorporate more protein in your diet on a regular basis. Now, initially, the easiest way to do that is with a protein shake. 
But over time, I mean, these are my, and I think I even did a video on this um, here recently, my, my favorite protein hacks. I mean, there's Fairlife Milk, there's Gene Pro. One of my, uh, one of the nurses that I work, that works with me in Indo, his wife just got some bars that are called Built, B-U-I-L-T. He said, oh my gosh, they taste just like a candy bar. Try those. Halo Top, um, ice cream. Um, I love the Quest chips. So try to think outside the box. You do not have to have a great big protein drink to meet your requirements. It's sometimes trying to be a little bit more crafty, especially if you don't particularly like the protein drinks. But again, part of this is, the good is when you have these surgeries, you lose weight, and it really is the best way to help you with a lot of your health problems. But the downside, there's always a pro and a con. The con is, is that you are going to have to make sure that you keep up with your vitamins and protein if you want to have good long-term success. So that's really what I explained to the patient. I said, in the long term, it's really going to be nutritional. Keep up with your vitamins, keep up with your protein, and you'll do fine. But the reality is, is that you should not have to have, like, I don't want you to think you're never going to be able to go out for a cocktail with the girls. And I don't want you to think that you're never going to be able to enjoy Thanksgiving. Although I will say, our Thanksgiving now are way different. I mean, my mom's had surgery. I have another family member that's had surgery. My husband's had surgery. And then I have my grandma who's 90 and I have a six year old. So nobody eats a whole bunch. So while we used to have this huge feast, now it's much, much smaller portions that we really don't do a lot of grazing throughout the day. Whereas prior to surgery, I mean, it was a smorgasbord. But has that made Thanksgiving bad? No. Um, do we just not eat as many um, snacks now while we're playing Mahjong or playing cards? Yeah, we just aren't eating that much. Um, but that's fine, we still are able to be together. And so um, there are certainly changes that you're going to have to make, but anything that is good in this world, anything that is gonna be good for you, it's, it's, it's not gonna just be unfortunately handed to you in a silver platter, but that's anything in life. And you are worth this, your health is worth this, and you can do this. And so that's what I just encourage my patient today that in the long term, if you do the things you need to do 80% of the time and then the other 20% you live your life, you're going to do fine. So hope this helped if you were wondering, gosh, how is this really going to be in the long term? The reality is it's going to be fantastic. So hope this helped.